Now, so far, you've been hearing from, pretty much hearing from Google about the, the new trends and the potential for social, mobile collaboration to transform your business processes, transform your organization. I kind of call this the authentication session. This is the chance now for you to hear from your peers in the industry and, and get their perspectives on how they're adopting these kind of capabilities, technologies, how they're driving their businesses. Uh, and we've really, what we've done is we've, uh, you know, we want this to be a highly uh, interactive, we want this to be a highly interactive session. Uh, so it's gonna be a two-way conversation. And we put together a panel that is pretty much representative of uh, all industries from uh, banking to uh, financial services to uh, manufacturing, uh, IT services, BPO, and, and you know, consumer online portals. So we pretty much have covered the entire in Indian economy from an industry perspective. And we've also brought together a panel that, that, that really covers all of the products that you've heard about today from our apps solutions, from our, from our uh, search uh, solutions to the cloud services uh, products, as well as uh, geospatial products. And uh, what I'm gonna do in a second is call upon the panelists to uh, come to the stage and uh, share with you their experiences. And then I'm gonna really ask a couple of questions to, to get the conversation going. And then I'm gonna hand it over to you for you to ask whatever questions you uh, you would like to, you've been thinking about that you haven't been able to get off your chest so far. If you can join me in a warm round of applause for, for the panelists. So we have Asmita uh, Janarkar, who is the CIO of Voltas. <laughs> Asmita, if I can ask you to join us. We have uh, Amit Somani, the uh, Chief Product Officer from Make My Trip. <laughs> Sandeep, Sandeep Fanas Gaunkar, CIO of Reliance Capital Group. Another Sandeep, Sandeep Suryavanshi, who is the CIO of uh, Zensa. And we have Anil Jagia, who is the CIO of HDFC Bank. Anil, if you can join us. I think I'll take my seat. First of all, let me thank all of you for agreeing to participate in the session, sharing your experiences, taking questions, fielding questions from everyone who appears, and I'm sure colleagues that you've known from the past in the industry. So Asmita, I mean, Volta's traditional manufacturing organization, you know, conventional wisdom would, uh, would make us think that you would be a follower in the cloud. But, uh, but as Shailesh put it, you're, you're on a fast pitch playing on the front foot being an innovator. What were the main drivers for, for, for you and for Voltas to, uh, to go uh, down this path? So uh, main drivers were basically, uh, this is a demand from my customers. Uh, somewhere in the statistics you showed 30% of workforce is uh, uh, younger workforce. Uh, we were on a hybrid platform of uh, Lotus Notes and a Linux Mail. So cost was not a challenge for me. I was not trying to cut cost because cost cutting was 2008-9 challenge and we cut cost by stopping AMCs to IBM and getting in a parallel Linux solution, both hybrid mode. So there was no match for my email cost with any one of these cloud providers. That was not the trigger. The trigger was majority of these younger generations started asking for email on mobile. There was a demand uh, from managers to be able to access mail from anywhere. Uh, so all these uh, anywhere mail, anytime, anywhere, anytime access, access on mobile. And there was third one where they wanted larger uh, mailbox sizes. But this was a trigger that we looked at cloud solution. We evaluated all uh, platforms and finally went for Google. Great. Thanks, Asmita. Uh, Sandeep, uh, you know, let's kind of talk a bit about the elephant in the room. You know, uh, the number one concern from everyone in the pre-survey was security. You're a financial services organization. I'm sure that was something that must have come up during your thought process. Uh, how did you go about tackling that particular concern? No, I think that was, uh, that was something that you really discovered en route. That uh, you know, we, had to, we had to create a lot of, uh, we had to really plug the security uh, gaps that we, uh, that we found. You know? Because you know, yours is a true public cloud application, frankly. 
And I think for all these years, uh, you know, the, all the debate that has been happening between CIOs has been typically on a private cloud infrastructure, you know. And most of us co-locate in third-party data centers, so that's all private cloud. So it's all very secure. But the moment you get onto public cloud, it's a very different ballgame altogether. See, inside the public cloud, you know, you have great infrastructure, you have great throughput, et cetera. But the fact is that you connect to the public cloud, and then the data coming out from the public cloud, how do you ensure that it's secure? Uh, you know, so one is access, and who, who accesses that application on the public cloud? And the second is the movement of data in and out of the public cloud. And today what is happening is that if you're a, if you're a reasonably legacy enterprise, you, know, you have uh, applications both on-premise as well as in the cloud. And you have to make both these applications talk to each other. So that's the third challenge that is there. You need to have very efficient APIs that ensure that your application in the cloud talks to SAP or Active Directory or whatever. Thanks, Thanks Sandeep. On to another Sandeep. Sandeep, uh, uh, you know, I got the feeling from uh, Shailesh Rao's session that there was a lot of interest in cloud services. But there were also a lot of questions about how can we use things such as the app engine? What kind of applications to build? How do we you know, deliver this to, in, in, in terms of useful applications in the enterprise? Now, I understand you've actually used our app engine to build one application. I understand you have some views about the kind of application you can build using this, uh, this platform. So would you like to share some of that with uh, the, the audience? Sure, okay. So uh, basically what we've put in place is a, is a roadmap where we will move uh, more and more of our applications onto the cloud, um, and Google App Engine was obviously one uh, choice. We've actually uh, have been working significantly in uh, you know the space of cloud-enabled applications. We have for last around four years um, a product which runs on Amazon uh, as a service. So there, there are very uh, many projects that we've done which are essentially cloud-enabled applications. Okay, thank you, Sandeep. Amit, uh, you know, moving on to maps and uh, visualization, we had a very interesting session from Tarun and, and Doug on a more social front. Uh, I think it's quite intuitive how maps can be used in your business and how it's in, you know, integral to your business. Could you share with everyone you know, what your next steps are in terms of location-based services and perhaps uh, you know, how that could apply in other industries? Uh, sure. Um, so as I was saying earlier, travel is inherently kind of mobile. So uh, mobile, both you know, traveler being mobile and mobile, you know, the phone being or, or, a, or a smartphone being with you. So as I think about a lot of uh, you know, financial services and, and banks uh, in the audience here, uh, and the example I think uh, Mr. Ayer cited about Flipkart and cash on delivery, 65% of transactions on Flipkart are cash on delivery. But uh, uh, the return ratio there is 40%. So you know, almost uh, one out of two things get returned when you go to uh, ship the product. And uh, I've, I've tried this myself with Flipkart. I'm a Flipkart customer, uh, where if, I'm, if my wife's not at home or, or nobody is at home to pick it up or somebody else, uh, you know, I'm in the office or somebody else is at home and they're doing a delivery and I've done it cash on delivery, how do I ensure that that, that experience is also seamless, right? Uh, so the person that's delivering uh, uh, the good and, and is there to collect the cash, uh, if you further take it one step further in terms of if I could do a digital cash transaction when they show up, if, you know, if, if I'm not going to be there at my office or I'm going to be at home or vice versa, I can kind of direct them to the right place. And then I can do a you know, credit card on delivery, a different kind of COD there or some kind of a digital cash transaction. Um, so maps can play like a, a enormously uh, uh, you know, kind of big role. I'm sure you at Google know that uh, the usage of maps is going through the roof even in countries like India and other emerging countries thanks to MapMaker and other stuff. So I think there's a ton of examples of how you can use it. I still think it's in the realm of like we are trying it out, uh, experiential stuff and sort of more innovation. I don't think it's gotten to a complete utilitarian nature yet, m perhaps like it is out west. Uh, uh, but, but certainly I, I, I think in terms of uh, uh, the, the examples I cited, COD, you know, even for travel, ATM locators, right? I mean, while ATMs have become quite ubiquitous, if I'm doing a road trip from here to Rishikesh and mm -hmm. I need cash, it's still not obvious to me where should I stop to uh, to get the cash. So I think there's lots and lots of examples. So, but I'll hand it off to uh, thanks, thanks, to you. Amit. So Anil, I mean, I understand that you're still just in the process of implementing and and releasing out the search capabilities on the internet. Uh, and the next, the next, as you mentioned, the next stage is to you know, bring that same capabilities for knowledge sharing on the intranet for your employees. You know, what's your vision? What do you see as the benefits that uh, is going to be created for HDFC by providing that capability uh, to, to, to your entire workforce? 
Well, to, to clear it to my workforce, it's obvious, you know, we have a lot of uh, young employees, we're rapidly growing, we're adding four or five hundred branches a year to get these youngsters with heavy turnover that we experience in the industry, 20 percent a year, uh, to get the uh, knowledge levels up and about and you know, really relevant is a, is a Herculean task and an impossibility. So we believe that, you know, uh, yes, of course, we need to train our people, but clearly we need to provide a very sound reference uh, uh, capability where the employee can go in to our uh, portal uh, and without having too much prior knowledge or uh, can exactly go and find out what is the policy, what is the regulation, what he can do, what he can't do, what are the boundaries, what our offering is, what you know the terms of offer are, what the client should be told. So we believe that this will make uh, you know our sales process significantly more effective, our productivity significantly uh, higher and obviously reduce the risk around compliance that industry like ours uh, have. But I'll just like to also add, uh, you know, just taking a, a little different tangent that I think uh, before I came into this conference, I did not have a good experience or understanding of Google's enterprise capability beyond uh, the search engine, which I understood, and of course the advertising, which we use very effectively. Uh, so this has been a good learning for me and actually as I've sat through the day I've already uh, taken note of three things that I need to do and I think there are three opportunities. So everywhere I go if I can find and remember three things that I need to do I think I find that uh, whole day well spent. So we will be in touch with your uh, teams and uh, to see how we can progress the three initiatives. Th thanks Anil. By the end of tomorrow we want to make that five. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, look, I'm going to open it up for questions. It's a great opportunity for every, you know, each of you to ask your peers in the room many questions you have around what they've implemented, what their vision was, what the challenges have been. So, really, over to you for, for, for questions. I have um, a question to all of you who have been trying to implement uh, cloud. Uh, what I see and hear uh, at the beginning has been made in terms of document collaboration and thought sharing, which can give substantial productivity improvement and uh, simultaneous occurrence which can also bring about innovation. But it's not, it's about serious business transactions. Okay, now, as I see, I have a question to you before that I want to give you a problem statement to you. Now, you do not have the IT Act enhanced anywhere near to address the, the cloud services yet. And the, the portability which we are talking about in mobile, there also needs to be psychologically kind of portability um, in the cloud space where the industry has to come together. The cloud services providers have to come together and in their own interest and in the interest of customers need to enunciate policies which can influence our regulatory framework. Now, in the absence of this, do you see yourself, any of you, moving to business critical applications where you will close your eyes and say that a couple of years from now, you will close all your data centers. You will not be in the license raj to buy licenses but you would rather go on cloud. So I think, uh, you know, I'll, I'll attempt to answer part of it. So one thing I, you know, when you say, will we close our data centers? I don't see that happening in any time, next five years, probably more. There is, in the next two, three years, gonna be a movement from uh, everything to be on-premise to moving some of the uh, applications to the cloud. Even today, there are critical business processes that are running on the cloud as well. And I think a lot of us have some or the other services which we're using from the cloud. Like we are saying that we would, we would want to move our, uh, the proposal building process completely to the cloud because it, I mean our sales force is distributed, our uh, customers are distributed, our uh, teams across uh, the globe are you know, distributed and they have to collaborate together. So, and that is a, most uh, critical business process that we have. So we're going to have that in the cloud. That's not um, uh, you know, a problem at all. But uh, you know, I think from an IT Act perspective, there are a few things which are still not uh, clear. But the point is we cannot really wait for uh, that solution or that. I believe that where is the data needs to be answered clearly is what one of the clauses for IT, IT Act says today. And today, uh, if it is enforced, we are uh, in, in a cloud scenario, in a public cloud scenario, we will not be able to answer that. That is the most um, you know, contentious issue that we're going to face. Um, we'll have to see how it goes, uh, and if it comes to that, that there is a challenge with that, we, we may have to you know, uh, change track at that point of time, but I guess we'll have enough time to do that if it comes to that. 
right now we are saying that we'll take the risk for some some processes at least anyone else would like to respond see on the uh, on the, on the collaboration piece uh, um, what's going to happen is that what we feel is that we would like to fulfill um, the transaction at the point of customer contact okay so what's going to happen is that uh, you know we should enable a sales person to be able to effectively connect to a decision maker and allow for approvals to take place uh, asap at the point of contact you know so for example if a particular uh, price quotation has got to be approved or if a particular loan has got to be approved or if a particular collection item has got to be enforced or something then this type of tool can help him uh, you know sort of connect and uh, and get the approvals as speedily as possible so you basically connect to anybody who is online and and ensure that the approval takes place so i see a huge scope for uh, uh, collaboration happening there uh, you know in, in in the in the field especially in in a, in a business like ours which is so retail intensive where we are constantly using agents and employees and feet on street to uh, to basically connect to customers and mobilize business one of the things that i I've, I've heard in talking to um, many of the guests last night and this morning is you know, how do you get your employees to embrace this change i don't think there's one answer for this but i think it's a question that comes up every time and i know you spoke about it a little bit but you know, how do you get them to is this usually a top down decision how much of it is bottoms up and how do you get your employees to see the power of collaboration how do you make this become part of their day to day work yeah in our case it has been majority bottoms up uh, people at the lower level started using these collaboration features more easily than the top level in fact when we migrated md was the last one to get migrated so we went in that order we uh, migrated the bot bottom rung first and the last two people to get migrated on google were the cfo and the md and if md is opted to use uh, google video for addressing his employees i think we have completed the cycle <laughs> yeah um, my approach has really been uh, for the first uh, whatever changes to give people choices uh, you can use the traditional you can use something new and over time as more and more people embrace and uh, and you know adopt the new it becomes viral good things get talked about it and once it gets you know a critical mass then you know we can shut the previous one and force move everything to the new way Uh, in our case, obviously, uh, you know, we have an average age of 27 years as our uh, employees. Wow. Uh, so uh, it was definitely a huge excitement from uh, <coughs> bottoms up as well. But in our case, also from top down, I have I, have, I was forced to create a, a separate domain for our executive team so that they can play around uh, uh, with this. And to just give you an example, uh, when we uh, went asked for early adopters. Uh, we sent a mail out on friday evening and by monday morning i had 150 nominations for early adopters already and uh, within two days i had 500 and i had to shut down the uh, you know portal to say that look this is all we're going to take as early adopters 500 people we cannot uh, have more than that so uh, but again you know i think we had we had forced people to we were saying that look these are the tools we're going to definitely deploy uh we're not going to allow people to use uh, the older ways of uh, emails at all uh, but beyond that uh, for docs and sites we've kept it open completely and people have taken uh, like fish to water for these tools i mean we've absolutely given uh, very little training if at all beyond the training site and people have used very intuitively the docs and uh, the sites feature uh, and we have at this point of time not we've restricted it from going outside the domain at all there's no sharing allowed outside the domain at the point of time but uh, i'm guessing in about 6 uh, months from now we will not have any sharepoint sites we we had 40 uh, at one point of time we will have all those migrated to sites uh, and docs pretty quickly so that's okay. our experience being okay if you could just join me giving a thunderous round of applause for all our panelists thank you very much thank you thanks a lot Thank you. Thank you.